This video was formerly titled Miscellaneous, but that had the ring of assorted, unimportant odds and ends. The contents of this section don't easily fit into one unifying category, but they do comprise some of the most common problems I've seen in the papers of Rissier students. Some of the topics covered here are among the items about which students most frequently ask. We'll start with a few don'ts, the first of which is don't use large chunks of quotations just to fill space. None of your professors are fooled by this trick, and more likely than not, it will be detrimental rather than helpful to your grade. Another don't? Don't cite after every sentence in a paragraph if all the citations are from the same source. After speaking with a host of Rasir professors, I found that a top complaint was both students who undercite and those who oversight. You needn't read the entire example on screen, but I've put the citations in Aquamarine so you can see that, in fact, each sentence has been cited from the same source. Instead, try writing your sentences in such a way as to show the reader that all your information is from the same place. Of course, you should definitely cite the first sentence that comes from an author. It's also a good idea to cite the last sentence from that source. This book ending technique isn't prescribed by APA, but it is a useful way to reduce the number of citations while still clearly conveying to your reader where your information has come from. Writing this way does require more effort and attention to how your sentences fit together, but all good writing requires this kind of conscientious thought and planning. Take a moment to observe how these sentences have been constructed. Remember, you can pause this video at any time and resume playing when ready. If you like, you can also rewind to compare this version with the original on the previous slide. Please don't avoid punctuating a quote because your interviewee didn't pause while speaking. As a writer, it's your job to add grammatical punctuation where needed. This includes periods, commas, question marks, colons, and semicolons. Remember, your interviewee may not have said period or comma, but withholding punctuation does not make a quote more accurate. It only confuses your reader. Take a look at the example below to see what I mean. Similarly, don't include every um or uh in a transcription or interview. Including these sounds only distracts the reader from the actual meaning you're trying to convey through a quote. You may decide to use ellipsis to remove unneeded words, or take only the most salient portions of a quote. This might mean using only one sentence, or even just a phrase from an interview. Colon usage often mystifies students beginning graduate school. It's a mark of punctuation that we've all seen used in books and articles, but few students have had real instruction on how to use the colon. For starters, a complete sentence must precede a colon that's used to introduce a list. For example, this correct version, there are several uses for the colon, a complete sentence. Incorrect, the uses for the colon are, this is an incomplete sentence. Another example, types of men's shoes include the following, correct versus types of men's shoes include incomplete and incorrect. Finally, the formatting of numbers. Use numerals to express numbers 10 or above, numbers immediately preceding a unit of measure, such as 13 centimeters or 7.5 years, percentages, ratios, and percentiles, and numbers representing time, dates, ages, or scores. Conversely, use numbers typed out with letters, such as 0 or 9, for the following. Any number that begins a sentence or heading, common fractions, and numbers 0 to 9. I hope this has been a painless, informative video. Thanks for watching, and happy writing!